Man, that was awesome. I got to shoot this minigun? I got to shoot the MP7. Now that shooting's done, let's drink. Oh, you want to drink? Jared! What? Why are we to take? I don't know. Why are we in Iraq? Yeah, I don't get it, man. If Ben Affleck is directing the movie from behind the camera, how do you see him in front of the camera? Oh, look who's trying to show up today. So where'd you guys end up this time? You not believe me if I told you. So we're gonna do this MP7 video or what? Yeah, y'all ready? Let's do this shit. All right, man. <laughs> The MP7 was put into production in 1999 by H&K Germany. It's put into service in 2001. It's a closed, rotating, locking bolt, and it uses either a 20, 30, or 40 round box magazine and fires the 4.6 by 30 millimeter round. The MP7 has all the characteristics of a subgun, but with that 4.6 by 30 ammunition that it uses, it sits in between subgun and rifle. It meets NATO's 1989 PDW requirements, uh, or personal defense weapon, and that actually puts it as a direct rival to FN's P90. Having a projectile the size of a, of a pistol round with more penetration than some rifles, actually. The MP7 is used in at least 23 different countries and used by almost 30 different organizations, including the Pontifical Swiss Guard in Vatican City. So there's also a semi-auto version created called the MP7 SF, but the UK's Ministry of Defense Police, as far as I know, are the only ones using that version of it. All right, so now we're going to take this over to Sean. He's going to break it down for you. Hey guys, we're going to go ahead and uh, show you guys the H&K MP7. It's a pretty nifty little gun, somewhat of a unicorn in the United States. They're hard to come by. You don't see them very often. Uh, at Battlefield Vegas, we have four of them on site. Uh, so if, if you want to shoot them or you have a group of people want to shoot them, we got enough to handle it. Uh, this is a pretty cool little gun. It shoots the uh, 4.6 millimeter round. Um, main purpose of that round is light armor penetration. It's capable of uh, penetrating 20 layers of Kevlar at 200 meters, which is pretty substantial. It's a fast little gun too. It shoots at about 950 rounds a minute. So uh, this thing's quick. Uh, we're gonna go over the breakdown of this gun, show you the internals of it. Um, nothing too complicated, uh, but just get you a look at this rare beast we got here. First thing, just like any weapon you wanna do is you wanna clear it. Uh, there's a charging handle on the, on the rear part of it, just similar to an M4, and an ambidextrous uh, slide lock right up front. You're gonna lift up on that lever to lock the bolt to the rear. So we're gonna go ahead and cock the bolt to the rear. Locking it just like that. Visually and uh, somewhat physically, because it's such a small round, try to feel into the chamber. But after that, you're going to go ahead and drop the bolt back forward, just like that. There's two pins located in the rear, pushing them out from right to left, starting with the top and then the bottom. They come out really easily. Set those pins off to the side. And then all at once, you're going to pull the buttstock out, and the bolt is going to come out with it. It's all attached. So with a good tug, just like that, setting the receiver off to the side. This right here is actually the buttstock charging handle and it actually attaches the bolt carrier. So to remove the bolt carrier from the buttstock and charging handle, you need to put it vertical, just like this, and push down on the bolt carrier, lifting up on the charging handle and then pulling the bolt carrier off to the side. Once you have your uh, carrier removed, um, it's it's a rotating bolt, just like the AR. Uh, it fires from the clo closed bolt position. Uh, there, just like the AR, to remove the bolt from the carrier, there's a firing pin retaining pin, and it actually holds it in. Uh, 
from left to right. It's kind of stiff on some models, but you're going to push that pin out, just right here. And then the firing pin, unlike the AR, actually has a firing pin spring on it. And it's retained by this guy right here. Uh, it's just a little lever that holds it in. You're going to turn it to, or push it to the side, and it'll actually expose a little recessed cutout area in the firing pin. And you can go ahead and grab a hold of it, pull it out. Um, just like the AR, there is a cam pin inside of it. Uh, they're kind of hard to get to. Everything in this gun is a lot smaller than your standard AR bolt carrier. Cam pin comes out just like that. Bolt comes out, and then inside of there is the firing pin spring. You can remove it if you want. Keep it in there to, so it doesn't get lost. Everything else is almost identical. Extractor, ejector, all of it. It's just, uh, just miniature. All right, so after you get the bolt taken apart, uh, the next part that, uh, is, that needs service every once in a while is the piston. In the receiver in the front end, um, and this requires tools to take apart. This isn't something you can just do in the field. Uh, there is an end cap on the end of this gun. First thing you want to do is take a punch. There's a, little, uh, there's a little lever right in front of the foregrip. You're going to push down on that lever and pop out this little end cap that exposes the piston and the front of the barrel. You're going to get an Allen head key, and you're going to, in the front of it, I don't know how well you can see it, but in the front of it, there's an Allen key uh, set screw. They're uh, pretty stiff, especially out of the factory, but you're going to go ahead and counterclockwise pull it out, and then behind that, there's a little cutout in the side of the receiver right here. You're going to use a punch or a pick or something, and you're going to push the piston forward, because like I said, it's going to be in there pretty good. It's held in by gas rings. Push that piston out, it'll fall out, and then just use your standard uh, stainless steel brush, clean it off, make sure that your uh, piston rings are intact, don't mess them up too bad. Uh, and, then, and then that is the majority of this gun. Uh, it doesn't actually get very dirty. There's not a whole lot of propellant in this round. Um, to, to burn off and create a lot of carbon buildup. Uh, we've put, just recently, uh, we, we sent these guns out to Maryland. We did a, uh, a demo with, the, uh, Maryland, with a Maryland SWAT team. They put about 3,000 rounds to it in just over a 12-hour period. Uh, so these, these guns got ran through the ringer, and, and, they, and they performed fairly well. There's a, there's a couple little things about them that, that the police there didn't like, uh, one of them being the charging handle located in the rear. It's kind of flimsy, it's made of plastic. Um, the main complaint of it was, is through the higher round counts, about 1,500 rounds or so, this charging handle, and I don't know if it was due to being warm or what, uh, it was also raining at the time, but this charging handle under repeated firing full auto, this charging handle would then would start reciprocating with the bolt, hitting the shooter in the nose every time he would fire. Uh, that was one of the main complaints of this gun. Uh, cleanliness was good, uh, reliability was great with this gun, um, and knockdown power, I guess, stopping power, if you'd call it, uh, with this round was in question. But we're going to go over the round comparison size just so you guys at home can get an idea of what, how little of a round this thing is. Um, right here in front of me, I have a 5.56 round, uh, your standard 55 grain. Right here is a, uh, a 5.7 round. Uh, th which is actually what this weapon was competing with at the time during design. The next one is the 4.6, just the little guy. And then I got your standard 9mm, just to show you grain weight size. It's, it's, it's night and day. Uh, right here is the rounds. They're, it's, a, it's a pretty big difference. The reason that they went with this round is so that they could keep the magazine internally stored in the grip rather than having one you know, in the breech area. Uh, it, it keeps this gun really compact, small, lightweight. Um, but other than that, I mean, I'm an HK guy, and I gotta say, uh, I really like this gun, uh, aside from the insane rate of fire that this thing has.